Great, we have a million questions for you. Good. <laughs> Yes, well, none of the above. First of all, I came in this morning and I was saying to these guys, yeah. Dennis Leary is so hot. Did you ever just like want to kiss him? Like I would have just tried to make out with him yeah, so much. I did. I don't, I don't think we share that instinct. We never had a love scene. I've been working with Dennis for maybe 10, 15 years. Never had a love scene. Oh, my God. Uh, Dennis Leary, is, is he even better looking in real life? I can't answer this at all. <laughs> I, there's nothing I can do. I'm going to go back. Sit yeah. back she was yeah. I, 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 was like, I promise it won't be all about Dennis Leary, but I, I, I'm so obsessed. Like, really? he, yes. Okay. I don't know. He's just like, anyway, I don't know. Okay, I'll stop. Was yeah, that the most right. obnoxious question you've gotten so far this morning after how many interviews you've done? No, no, no. no. Okay, it's good. It's fine. You, you need to get that out of your system. Oh, my God. <laughs> I know. There's something about him. Anyway. How is he? Well, just one more question. What Go was ahead. it like to work with? He's a sweeter. He's that guy. Dennis really? is that guy. Is He's, Dennis a generous guy with yes. other Dennis, comics? I always call, I always call Dennis the, the skinny Irish Sinatra. Cause really? He was, yeah, because he was like, it's always a rat pack. And he gave me... My first, um, my, my, my most significant acting uh, dramatic role. You know, he gave me this, it's a whole page monologue. He gave me the thing, and I, I go home, I did it, and he left a voicemail for me. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And he goes, hey, asshole. Because <laughs> that's a term of endearment. He goes, uh, I, I gave you the ball, you knocked it out of the park, and the fact that you were a comic uh, uh, just made me really proud of you. Fuck you, see you tomorrow. So and that's how it all. And well, I got that. Rescuing. I got that voice message. I actually came down the stairs and uh, uh, and my wife saw my face and went, "Oh, who said something nice to you?" Because I can't process <laughs> yeah. that. We both have a background in mainstream media. We mm -hmm. worked in radio for years and right. TV, and then we just sort of got so tired with all the restraints. Mm -hmm. You know, you, it's so hard to be creative now with sure. major art companies. and commerce don't meet for a reason. Right. Adam just looked at me when you said the TV thing. Was like, no fucking way did he work in TV. <laughs> what? You just gave me. The that look like no, no I, I want to include you in the conversation uh, I, I want to go this like, way I know I haven't shaved since I oh, had to work oh stop it TV, right? you work at the, <laughs> don't you need to spend some time in the self esteem room oh actually you know stop what? you can be on t how, look how long did the Muppet show run Dude, you look just like one of them just like one of them you're right? fine I'm great I would love to be part of Animals Rock Band see that you're yeah. fine and I just kept haunting open mics and I didn't sleep because I had a day job so I would go to open mics and just sit at the club and I would just Talk to the bartenders and be in the area where things are going to happen. Wow. And Eastside Comedy Club in Long Island, um, they, I would do the open mic on Wednesday, and Thursday I would just go and sit at the bar and watch. And the owner figured out, hey, he can do the middle spot, and I don't have to pay him. And he's good. So wow. I got stage time for nothing, and I knew I was being taken advantage of, but fine, use me up. I got the stage time. So I just haunted the area I wanted to be in. 90% of life is just fucking showing up. So, oh, that's so good. So it be is. where you want to be. So if you got a feel that you're going to trust, let's say it doesn't work out. If you want to go down with the ship, you're going to make your mistake, you're going to make somebody else's mistake. At least yeah. make your mistake. Make right? your yeah. mistake. Yeah. That's it. That's a good one. It didn't work out. Yeah. And, it was my, and I own it. You know, that's where I would be because I saw Richard Pryor when I was a kid. And I went, oh, that's just, look what that man can do. So that I wasn't. I didn't really know that I wanted to do that, but I was profoundly moved by what I saw. And I had never felt that before. So I remember that feeling. I'm going, whoa, look what this guy can do. And I want to do that. I don't know how to do that, but I want to be able to do that. Right. Um, so I, I got the stage time, and I did it. And I kept my day job for as long as I could. I went to college yes. the first year. And you know your first year of college, you drink too much. You know, you think you have friends forever. And then you sober up your second year. You go, I've gained 15 pounds. He's a drug addict. He owes me money. i got to get the hell out of here. <laughs> That's so, actually college, yeah. yeah. That was mine exactly. <laughs> yeah, so you wake up and yeah. you're like, all right, I'm not going down with this mm -hmm. shit. <laughs> so I would go home every weekend and work. So I always had money in my pocket. So I was always, there was always a drive to succeed. So in answer to your question, I was surviving mm. um, uh, for a, a long time. What's the stand-up comedy scene like now? You know, mm -hmm. obviously it's changed a lot with yeah. social media. Yeah. Um, what's your take on that? Do you like that? You have to evolve. I mean, it, it's the... The species that survives is not the strongest, it's not the smartest, it's the one that can adapt to change. So you wow. have to evolve. Um, it's a lot different. It's like right now, we're doing this. We couldn't have yeah. done this. Oh, my God. Well, I don't even think you would have done a podcast five years ago. You would have been like, no. But now, but now what, I mean, podcasting is probably as big a reach for you as some radio shows. Well, it's, it's mean, just it's the, next, it's the next dispensing of information. It's the next, it's where people are going to go to get their entertainment. Everything yeah. is so fragmented. 
to uh, to get people to come out. That's why my show is every. There's going to be a lot of uh, improv and a lot of stuff. It can only happen in that moment, in this this moment in time, with this energy, with you being a part of it. Because mm-hmm. I got to give the people some something different to right. get them out of the house and come back. And one of the things I've noticed is uh, someone will come see me on a Thursday, and if I have a good show, they'll come back with their friends on a Saturday. Mm-hmm. So it keeps it keeps the it keeps the ball rolling. Now so. you're on the road a lot. Are there any like cities that you really just dread going to now? Um, Aleppo. Okay, that's, yeah. a, that's one I would dread going to. Hey, also. I'm just so thrilled yeah. I know where that is. Yeah. I mean, honestly. And what it is. Yeah, what it is. Hey, what about political correctness? There's mm. all, you know, with comedy, there's all this, I like, have I have the oh. luxury of being able to skewer that because the role of the jester was to speak truth to power. And, you know, so, right. so I can, I don't really, I don't do a lot of politics because it's just, uh, I was talking to Allison before, right before the show. It's just, it, it angers me. And anger's really? not funny. It's just, it's yeah. too divisive. I'm I'm more a student of the human condition, and if I can, art to me is a verb, and there's 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 courage in in facing what that I can. I always write what I'm afraid of because there's a certain amount of energy. Ah. In there. There's a certain amount of energy connected in something you're avoiding. So again, it's hello, beastie. <laughs> Just <laughs> jumping in there. Handle it head on. Look the fucking monster in the eye. Um, one of my favorite stand-up clips of yours is when you talk about couples therapy, which yeah, yeah. I've done couples therapy. I'm not even married yet. Mm-hmm. Was that real? <laughs> yeah. Really? Oh, good. Okay, yeah. good. How long you been are you guys with... still in couples therapy? Funny? No, we, oh. it, it, it reached its end. Oh, okay. No, I feel not like the therapy, the relationship. Oh. I'm like, what are we doing? <laughs> I'm oh, spending a buck twenty a week to knock a round peg in a square hole. So. so what happened? You, you and your wife just worked it out? No, this, that was uh, I wrote that joke about uh, a girlfriend I had when we were doing it, and we broke up. And oh it was the best God. thing we could have done because you know we, you know we cared about each other. We we're good people. Try to make it work, but it didn't. It oh, wasn't good. supposed to be. Okay, so. you're making me feel better. Yeah, well, yeah, I, no. I've done couples how, therapy. How long have you been in therapy? Um, well, I've been in personal therapy like three years. Uh-huh. I love therapy. She's been in couples therapy for one year, four months. <laughs> With you? No. I know this because I keep track of her life. <laughs> oh. I know. It's been different. No, like uh, about a year. Let me ask you this. When you yeah. leave therapy, do you feel better? Yes. Okay, stay with that one. When you leave couples therapy, do you feel better? Yes. Okay, well, then keep going. Okay, good. Does he feel better? You know, that's a great question. I don't know. That's <laughs> Maybe that's something you should bring up in the therapist's office. <laughs> Maybe if you talk to each other without the therapist, you won't need that lady. Well, here's the thing is, he's, it's, you know, our biggest thing is like an emotional connectedness. Like, he, he's not a, a real emotional guy. Right. But, like, I, I need, like, emotion. You know, you got to, like, check in. Well, what, you want emotion? So, yes, yes. You'd be in my family. It's a freaking opera. <laughs> so that's our biggest complaint. Oh, God. It's like, we got to, like, connect and talk about your stresses. What, is, why, what does connection mean to you? Well, it's just basically taking time to talk about, like, how are you feeling about our relationship? What's going on stressful in your life? What's going on uh, Ryan, good I in your life? I want to break up with you right now. <laughs> exactly. You I do, too. Like Stop it. <laughs> oh, my God. Too much? Stop yes. it. Yeah. Okay. Well, Because you, you're asking questions. Just tell them how you feel. <laughs> Oh, okay. All right. So just do don't ask feel? him. I'm always trying to ask how, him how, how he do feels. Yeah. Well, he, don't want feel to, great. he doesn't fucking know how he feels. <laughs> and he doesn't want to know how he feels. Oh, all right. Maybe that's the issue. Yeah. He doesn't. <laughs> you're looking for. I'm always asking him. I'm like, you never share your stresses, hon. Like, I want to know, like, what's going on because with Because it's killing and he... him and he doesn't want to talk about it. <laughs> He okay. wants to come home. That's it. What, what's bothering you? Look, I, when I come home, I shut the door. I want to leave those problems out there. <laughs> well, that's what he says. And yes, I'm like... <laughs> he's, that's because that's what it is. You live together? Yes. Okay, fine. Basically, he's like this. Honey, you okay? Yeah, you're healthy? Yeah, is the mortgage paid? Good. See you next month. That's it. He wants to pay the bills and take care of you. He doesn't want to share. He doesn't want to talk. Uh-huh. He just wants to relax. Oh, well, maybe that's then I need to like kind you know? of just like... You know, let it be. That's what I was saying last night. I was like, you know, I really need to know your savings situation. How much are you saving these days? Like, what's going to be our future? That's Mm -hmm. what you asked Dan? Yes, that's what our... What does he he do for a living? (laughs) He works in soccer, so he's a director. He works in soccer? Yes. And you want to know what your future's going to (laughs) be? You're fucked. (laughs) (laughs) I'm telling you right now. He's a director of youth development for a soccer club. You're fucked twice. (laughs) Are you kidding? You're going to retire on Little League Soccer? (laughs) You better hope this podcast takes off, kid. You and the Muppet better make it big. We're going to make it. You're back on the wrong horse with this guy. Oh, my God. Adam Ferrer, you are so good. We have one last question for you. Go ahead. Paul Blart, Mall Cop. I read the book. Great decision or no? Yeah, it was great. Was it good? It was so much fun. Kevin's my pal, so he called me up and said, you want to play a cop? I said, yeah. What, What? The only regret I have, my opening scene in that car is I drove a cop car. 
and it was a, uh, a, a P-71 Crown Vic. It was an old cop car. And it was before I had Top Gear and I knew how to drive. Now I could have slid that thing sideways right in front of the camera. <laughs> I almost want to go back and reshoot and that redo scene. it. Where are we going to see you next? Are you working on any other shows you can uh, tell I'll us be, about? I'm, touring a hardcore, I'm doing a hardcore tour schedule, which is at uh, adamferrar.com on the Facebook yeah. or Twitter, at Adam Ferrar. You can see a whole tour schedule till Christmas. Okay. Uh, and then we got something in the works. Uh, and if the lawyers don't screw it up, we might have some good news for you soon. Nice. Oh, my God. Adam, it's Thank you so much. DCimprov.com nice for tickets. You're here all weekend. Yep. You were really fantastic. Thank Enjoyed meeting you. you. Thank Be you. Well. Thank you. Goodbye, Fozzie. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. I can't wait to see you the soon. The Muppet is such a good role for you. I know. Actually, can that I That actually you? is really something that we should have you audition for. Really? Yeah. Are you really playing this song right now? <laughs> the Muppet song I'm really playing. Yeah, absolutely. Monomena. <laughs> see? I do look like the Monomena guy. Yeah, you do. Anyway, Adam Ferreira, you got to go see him.